I appreciate that. I yield the balance of time, Mr. Fortenberry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for joining us today, Mr. Bromwich. Uh, this oil spill is an environmental catastrophe. BP was a reckless actor, and clearly all of us must work together to ensure three things, that this leak has continued to be stopped, that the environment's cleaned up, and that we work uh, with all the resources we have to ensure that this never happens again. In that regard, I think Mr. Ice has made a reasonable point, and you've answered it reasonably, that pr your reasoning for the moratorium mm -hmm. is that our resources are currently deployed and perhaps depleted, and in case there was a second spill or catastrophe like this, we would not have the resources to work against it. But given that there is the potential for this leak to be permanently stopped in the near term, your consideration of that factor in terms of the moratorium deadlines, I think, is reasonable. The second point, though, being um, given that um, the resources that are applied are under intense pressure to potentially move overseas and that this would cause more imported oil to come into our waters, more tankers, which are inherently more environmentally dangerous <laughs> than the drilling itself. Is the moratorium timeline potentially more risky? A related point is that all drilling is not the same. Now, BP was clearly engaged in the riskiest type of drilling. There is partial drilling. There is development drilling. Uh, is there a consideration that those may be exempted as well, given that their risk profile is lower? Uh, Congressman, the answer to that is, uh, is uh, yes, and that's part of what uh, Director Bromwich uh, will be uh, gathering information on. There may be different activities uh, and different zones of risk uh, that might be allowed uh, to go forward. We have already made one of those findings with respect to the shallow water uh, drilling and there may be others as uh, we move forward. So a segmentation of risk, risk profiling based upon the actual uh, historical past, uh, uh, um, uh, the historical analysis of risk based upon the type of drilling rather than a blanket moratorium. There, there may be, for example, Congressman, uh, you know, the, the differentiation between uh, the exploration wells and the deep water and uh, uh, wells that are being drilled into uh, already de uh, developed uh, reservoirs where you know exactly what it is that you're drilling into uh, as opposed to the, uh, the, the exploratory type of wells, which the Maconda well was one. And so those are the kinds of distinctions that uh, we will be taking a look at in, in the months ahead. Well, I think the last thing we want to do is increase pressures for more imported oil, which puts more tankers into our water, which, again, traditionally has been more of a high, or has a higher environmental risk of spillage than the drilling operations. With that said, I also would like to point out that I visited the area recently, one of the coastal communities. These people are exhausting themselves trying to save their land, save their way of life, and save the environment. I think you've heard. Time has expired. I had a good video for you, Ms. Secretary, but we'll have to do it another time. Uh, Ms. Malone.